Hello everyone, welcome back to all of you in the Smelly Army. So a lot of people have been complaining that uh, perfume reviewers on YouTube seem to get sent a lot of free bottles. And they're mostly from smaller companies, clone companies and these kind of people who need to promote their bottles on YouTube and uh, really haven't got another way of advertising. Uh, but I thought, isn't it about time that some of us reviewers got some free bottles from the bigger companies, the Bulgaris, the Chanel's, these kind of people. So I came to my local department store and picked up a few free bottles to review, which is great. Hello everyone, welcome back to all of you in the Smelly Army. So today I'm going to be sharing my opinions on four relatively new designer fragrance releases. Before we get into that, don't forget if you'd like to see an extra video from me every week, just sign up to my Patreon group, the Smelly Army Private Members Club. It's only $2 a month, extra video every week, plus more, and we're building a really nice community. I hope to see you in there. Let's get on with the main subject for today's video then. Four new fragrance releases from three different fragrance houses. Without further ado then, let's get into the first one, the big release of the moment in the uh, department store where I was because they were plugging this everywhere all the stores had big advertising boards and loads of bottles of it for you to try and the, in most cases I think they were pretty happy to give out samples too and it is of course Gucci's memoir Den Odeur so this one has a, an advertising campaign which uh, pretty much seems to be uh, saying that it's a, 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 not I was gonna say unisex let's let's call it a unisex fragrance or even a fragrance that is beyond gender so of course unisex well some people think that's saying man or female and of course nowadays you can't even say that so it, it's for um, you know anybody and everybody can wear this fragrance apparently uh, so that's an interesting thing although it's not that new is it because even as far back as CK1 in the 90s there have been unisex fragrances but the advertising campaign quite interesting it's got Harry Styles from One Direction and a rather kind of hippie-ish um, stuff going on of scenes which are a little bit reminiscent of I think the film Midsummer with a guy wearing like an animal head mask and people kind of cavorting in a slightly hippie-ish way I think quite interesting so more importantly the smell then the fragrance itself has been created by Alberto Morias it's an eau de parfum concentration and we have notes of chamomile bitter almond musk jasmine sandalwood cedar and vanilla I haven't bought a bottle I've got a sample here I tried it uh, I've been to stores twice and had it on skin and cards and I've had two samples to take away so I've given it a reasonably thorough go and what an unusual and intriguing smelling fragrance this one is they're actually describing it the company as a mineral aromatic a new genre of fragrance really by the way the prices on this one 40 mil 54 pounds 60 mil 66 pounds and 100 mil 92 pounds so relatively normal kind of designer prices now the smell on this one is very very unusual many people have described it as old ladyish or dated many people think that it leans much more feminine than masculine the overriding or the, the really predominant note is that of chamomile so chamomile is a very recognizable and strong note if you've ever tried chamomile tea you'll get a little bit of an idea how it smells it's a very sort of herbal almost slightly medicinal smell and that of course is probably going to be fairly polarizing this is not in any way a safe middle of the road mass market crowd pleasing type of smell the actual marketing they seem to want it to be a mass market fragrance because it's really being pushed in all the stores but the smell itself is is you know i give credit to alberto marias the famous perfumer for creating something unusual and very different smelling and rather niche smelling actually in my humble opinion that doesn't necessarily mean it's good or that i like it though and i'm not sure that i do the, the opening is very hard work it's a too much chamomile too medicinal it's chamomile mixed with florals and a sort of very much an old lady, slightly medicinal kind of smell is, is what I get off it. There is a kind of freshness, a, a little bit of a green bergamot type of feel to me, although I don't think bergamot's listed in the notes, and a kind of herbal tea 
note to it, not just chamomile, but a kind of maybe a green tea kind of accord. A certain sort of fresh linen-esque kind of thing is in there, but it's mixed with an awful lot of this very pungent chamomile. And I think there's some jasmine in there as well. Bitter almond I didn't pick up on mass massively. It is a little bit musky as well. As it dries down, you do get quite a nice crisp herbal green dry down that's very interesting leans a little bit feminine to me but could be regarded as unisex but all throughout the wearing the, the chamomile thing never totally goes away and it's very very uh, different to most things that you smelt out there i'd have to give it a thumbs sideways not a thumbs down but i couldn't honestly say a thumbs up that i'd like to wear it a lot and you know the first hour really was rather weird smelling so please let me know if you've tried this one uh, i think credit to the company for creating something that's clearly not an, a you know a dumbed down easy to make kind of fragrances like half the other things out there at least they've been original here and they're obviously trying to create a new type of fragrance uh, but it doesn't smell obviously very likable to me who knows as time goes on maybe we'll come to recognize this as a groundbreaking classic but i'm not quite there yet also i find the name a little bit odd uh, nice bottle design by the way i do like the old-fashioned retro bottle but memoir d'un odeur well in the french language that just means memories of a scent but the word odeur in English tends to have connotations of a bad odour or smell, body odour, all that kind of thing. So I don't know how this one's going to go down. I can't imagine it being a huge seller when people smell it, despite the huge uh, advertising campaign. So let me know if you've tried that one. Moving on swiftly then, we've got two new ones from Jean-Paul Gaultier, and I'll do the male release first. So the male release is called Le Beau, and I've got my sample of that one there. And the bottle design, very, very nice quite like what they've done of course it's similar to Le Mal Essence the flanker to Le Mal and the notes on this fragrance are bergamot coconut and tonka bean the perfumers as two of them are Sonia Constant and Quentin Bish so I don't know much of their work I'm afraid uh, an interesting fragrance indeed not very similar at all to the original Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal got some on a card here had some sprays at the shop I've been using my sample it's a mixture of fresh green kind of accords, something of a marine note going on in here, and a definitely a rather sweet Tonka-ish undertone. It reminded me in one way, actually, weirdly, of One Million Lucky from Paco Rabanne, but mixed with a kind of modern aquatic fresh accord. It's rather synthetic smelling, but it is rather pleasant. So it's a fresh fragrance mixed with sweetness. So it's kind of combining the two things people tend to like these days, you know, modern men's fragrance releases, either very fresh and clean and bright, like Dior Sauvage, Bleu de Chanel, or they're very sweet, like Paco Rabanne, One Million, and um, Ferragamo, Uomo. So it kind of mixes both things at once. Some people are saying it's a kind of a tropical smell. I don't really pick up on, on any coconut, to be honest, but I get a mixture of green marine accords with sweetness all at once. And that means it probably is fairly versatile. It's playful. It's a bit typical of the Jean-Paul Gaultier kind of aesthetic, the ambience that you get with the whole brand of Jean-Paul Gaultier. Fun, playful, modern, I think. And it's, it's certainly a modern smell, this one. Very pleasant, a little bit synthetic, a little bit too like a mixture of other modern scents for me to get very excited. But a good, decent release, so thumbs sideways, just edging slightly up, but not terribly exciting. Price-wise, I didn't catch the price on that one, but it's kind of your typical Jean-Paul Gaultier new release prices. They're describing it as being created by Jean-Paul Gaultier in his own image, an ultra-sexy masculine fragrance with a fresh, powerful sillage, an aromatic woody perfume built around addictive tonka bean and coconut wood with fresh bergamot notes. I found from what I can tell so far that the performance longevity feels like it's going to be kind of quite good average to good not amazing uh, by the way I actually thought that the memoir which I forgot to mention performance on uh, lasted rather well it didn't seem to be beasting out in performance but I thought the longevity was good other people have said otherwise not strong in projection but good in longevity I thought that one so Le Beau quite interesting but not blowing me away and the other one they've released of course simultaneously is La Belle the female flanker and this one features notes of pear vetiver and vanilla some websites are also listing bergamot same two perfumers Sonia Constant and Quentin Bish being described as an oriental vanilla fragrance reminds me 
rather a lot actually, or it has similarities with uh, Gautier Squared, the unisex release from a few years back that's now discontinued. Very much a very nice mixture of florals and vanilla, more floral than Gautier Squared, and has a kind of pink female floral synthetic accord mixed with a lot of very pleasant vanilla nothing groundbreaking but rather pleasant rather nice i think it lasts very well i think it's quite potent actually this one from what i can tell so far this is you know i haven't worn these millions of times i don't own a bottle and yeah, very pleasant very much a crowd pleasing kind of scent again nothing groundbreaking so a mixture of florals with sweetness good similar to gutier squared but a little bit more floral and feminine smelling and actually, therefore, I like it a little bit less than that one. It's kind of got that fruity, floral, female thing that can be a little underwhelming, I find, in female designer fragrances. Finally, then, we're going to talk about Bulgari's release, Wood Neroli. Again, the perfumer on this one, Alberto Marias. He's a busy man. The notes of bergamot neroli, orange blossom, Virginia cedar, cypriol, white musk, ambergris, amber, and leather. So this one, a soapy neroli heavy kind of fragrance reminded me a little bit of dunhill century i think that came out last year very fresh and clean a little bit mineralic again a bit of a theme today uh, by the way i didn't think memoir had anything mineralic in the smell but anyway back to this one a sort of mineralic almost petrichor-esque kind of accord in there plenty of neroli and freshness very soapy if you like things like mugler cologne Tom Ford's and Aroni Portofino, Dunhill Century. It's in that kind of ballpark and it was pleasant, but it didn't really blow me away. It lasted actually quite well, from what I can tell, a respectable performance, but it's not going to be beast mode. Prices on that one, 60 mils, 63 pounds, and 100 mil, 87 pounds. Good but nothing to write home about, a fresh soapy fragrance, but there are ones with a little bit more going on and it seemed to take cues from many other fragrances already out there. Just good but not very, very good. So kind of a thumb sideways on that one for me, I'm afraid. I wanted to like something a lot, but there wasn't one that blew me away. Let me know if you've tried any of these in the comments down there below, or what other new releases you're excited about this year. Thank you ever so much for watching. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. Bye-bye.